Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you are all doing well and keeping safe. My name is Shabir, founder of the Nikako. <laughs> Welcome back to the Happily Ever After podcast, uh, which is a podcast dedicated to conversations and Islamic guidance on all things related to marriage and relationships. And um, today we've uh, we've got another um, special guest with us. Alhamdulillah, I've had the uh, pleasure of um, studying um, uh, alongside her, with her at the same institute. We graduated around the same time as well. Mashallah, she does a lot of work uh, teaching, counseling in the time that she has, and uh, well she's done. given us her time today, alhamdulillah. Uh, so we welcome uh, onto the show Ustada Saliha Bukhari. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan uh, for uh, inviting me and for allowing me to be part of your discussions. Alhamdulillah, thank alhamdulillah. you for joining us. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, it's it's great to have you on, and um, something that we've been meaning to do for for some time now. Uh, but of That's course, right. with everything going on, it's just a bit. Things are a bit crazy right now in the world that we're yeah. living in. But alhamdulillah, uh, great to have you on, so that we can we can discuss today. Um, and as as everyone can kind of see from the title, uh, we're going to be talking a lot of things to do with um, yeah. love, right? Which uh, a lot of people. Um, you know, that's one of the first words that come to their mind when they think mm -hmm. about marriage, when they think about relationships, even perhaps even before uh, mm -hmm. marriage, um, they think about this, right? Um, and I guess the reason why I wanted to discuss this in particular today and go into loads of other things like love marriages and etc., is because mm -hmm. um, I think the world that we're living in right now um, with, you know, your Hollywood and your Bollywood and your social media, I think mm -hmm. everybody has this idea of what love is um and perhaps very it's not, different ideas perhaps it's a very yeah very <laughs> different ideas exactly oh. and perhaps it's not i don't like we need to kind of see what is the islamic guidance on this and um is it is it what you know it it seems to be on mm. what we see on our screens and on social media so i think that's why we kind of we're going to go down this line um mm. and um i just wanted to start with i guess really um it's not it's not a, it's not an easy question if i'm completely honest with you uh because it's not something you can easily kind of quantify but mm -hmm. like how do we how do we even define what love is in the, in the context of course of a relationship because oh. of course you could love your car you could love wealth right you could love whatever you, there's so many things you could mm -hmm. love but in the context of a relationship can we really define what it is or what it means to us and then we'll come to i guess we'll start off general and then we come to like the islamic kind of uh perspective on things mm -hmm. so i think as you said it's quite a complex topic but love mm. is such a general topic but let's begin with love I, I mean so if we take this word and think about the question really is do we feel loved and this this question you can apply to any relationship so our first relationship is with our mother if you think about it <clears throat> excuse me so when we um, in our mother's wombs that's the first relationship we develop um, and that's something you know right from your cord um, to your birth then you develop relationships with your obviously your parents then siblings um, and then the stages that you go through as you're growing up you have relationships with friends um, family extended family colleagues etc and the reason I'm just beginning with talking about many relations is that what do we look for in relationships? In relationships, we tend to look for um, all of those things, including love. So love is the main factor. We want to feel loved. We want to feel cared for. We want to feel secure in ourselves and in our relationships. Mm -hmm. So so I think it can apply to any relationship, but coming, of course, to um, the main topic that we're focusing on is happily ever after. So we know which love we're talking about, the ultimate love, <laughs> the yeah. love, if you like, in, in companionship, um, what we like to think of as our life partner or as, or as our soulmate. So this is the love we'll be focusing on today. Um, but I think it's equally important to look at all the spectrum of relationships because we seek, somewhere all of us seek love in all of those relationships. We want to be loved. We want to be needed. You know, that's one of our um, human instincts to feel needed, to feel loved, to feel wanted. And if we're lacking in those areas, we will, you know, develop problems and it will, those problems will then escalate into our relationships. 
So you can see those are the reasons that it's very important to be able to manage those relationships and to be able to understand that what does love mean to you, but not only that, what does love mean to others? Because it can mm -hmm. interpret, love can interpret, um, be interpreted in, in so many ways. It has so many languages. That's another thing we find when we study love. So, so yeah, it, it should be an interesting conversation because we can go down many paths, but let's see where yeah. we go today, inshallah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, mm -hmm. I, I like how you started off uh, going to mm -hmm. the different stages, I guess, or the different people that we connect with mm -hmm. in our lives um, and the kind of love that we experience. And, and like I said, mm -hmm. that the love that we share with our friends or with our mother, with our father, with our mm -hmm. children, with our siblings, is very different. And mm -hmm. um, it, it can be experienced in different ways. So I guess, like you said, the main one is we're talking about in the in the context of companionship and in relationships. Mm. Um, and you know, like when we when we're speaking um, about love between um, you know two companions or two spouses, um, yeah. again, what again, like you know, the way that I, I would love my wife or someone else loves their spouse, it, it's very different because everybody, like you said, love languages, right? People mm -hmm. want to yeah. be loved or show love in different ways um what where can what how can we kind of understand that from a relationship context mm. like what does love mean in a relationship what are maybe perhaps some examples of how love can be displayed mm. or shown yeah so first of all something you mentioned which is really important is about bollywood and hollywood influences in our lives and that's mm -hmm. huge as we know and social media so that can certainly influence us so for, for to some of us, perhaps, you know, the diamond ring, you know, a grand lavish wedding, perhaps a, an exotic holiday. Um, so these things, although they sound very material, may spell love. And I'm not saying totally in the material sense, but sometimes you have to understand your friend or your companion, what are their needs? And if, if that's the kind of upbringing they've had, um, you know, they, they're used to a lavish lifestyle or they, you know, it's somebody who takes pride in dressing or in jewellery, for example. And we can't belittle that just because, so I might be a different type of person, think, well, that's not really what drives me. I'm not, um, you know, perhaps what makes me happy is books. Perhaps what I like is um, my idea of a holiday would be to go away on a course, on an Islamic course somewhere, you know, um, in an exotic country. So it could be totally two different um, types of persons, but it's looking after each other's needs. But in a scenario like that, if you did have two people like that, for example, um, so what you would do is you would have the couple considering each other. So if, for example, I'm the kind of person, a diamond ring makes me happy, diamond earrings make me happy, perhaps, um, you know, if my husband, for example, his interest is in books, in, in courses, of course, he's not going to give me books and he's not going to give me a uh, an intensive course over the summer holidays or something. Yeah. He'll take into consideration my needs. So I think it's all about getting to know each other. And we can start off really simple. We're all capable of relationships. And the way we know that is we've had relationships in school. Now, luckily, we got to practice that in our playgrounds. We got it wrong. We made mistakes. We made the wrong friends. Sometimes we chose the right friends. And we know the consequences of them. Um, and, and, you know, similarly, we've gone through the experience in colleges. You know, then maybe some of us went to universities, um, have gone on to institutions in our adult life but we're always experiencing relationships and we're always learning from those relationships and you know we will face hardships we will face challenges even in those relationships and some relationships what we also learn is when they become toxic we learn to recognize them we learn to walk away but we also learn to recognize um, who those people are when we build relationships because when in in any relationship when you enter a serious level of commitment to each other um, it gets to a point where there's unconditional love and what I mean by that it, you know any of us can relate back to a childhood friend where we've often found we're so different in characteristics our choice in food is different our life our backgrounds are different perhaps um, our countries are different, our languages are different, but what we have in common is that we grow with each other. And because we've grown with each other and we know each other's background, we've shared problems with each other, we've shared good times and bad times with each other, 
the relationship you find is built around those incidents and having supported each other. So what that shows is that you're capable of understanding other people's um, needs, if you like. You're, you've gone through that experience of listening, of being there for somebody, of supporting them unconditionally without judging them. And you get better at it. And of course, you make mistakes as well in the process where you stop talking to each other. You know, you, you, you break up, you're not friends. And then, you know, for a whole year and then suddenly you pick up again in secondary school. Mm -hmm. So you go all those experiences in childhood, even through um, our own homes, the first early years, the early years, subhanAllah, even in Islam, are considered such important years, the, you know, zero to five especially the tarbiyah we get from our parents. Some of us are fortunate enough to come from, alhamdulillah, you know, stable backgrounds, stable homes. Others may not be so fortunate. But all these experiences shape us. So we all have been exposed to relationships in some way. And I believe um, who, you can dig into your past and, you know, take all those experiences to help you in the future and apply it to finding that you know ultimate life partner um mm. and and i think um i'm not sure why this has cropped up in my head but putting a time lo limit on it puts pressure on yourself so i think you have to allow yourself the freedom and you know despite all the pressures if you like when you're you know if you have a mother who's saying i'm worried about you you know you past 20s and you know you're not getting married you might be left behind on the shelf um, these types of concerns or even your own insecurities where you feel well, you know, I have friends in their 20s and they're all married and here I am, 25, mm -hmm. and I'm still looking. I mean, is that really so bad? Uh, you know, so we have to ask ourselves that it's we're not it's you're not going to have this one rule applying to every individual. So yeah. we have to allow ourselves, <clears throat> I believe, to be who we are. Mm -hmm. Every person's um, experience is going to be different. Every person's needs are going to be different. Some people will perhaps feel the need to find that person earlier on in their life and you'll find others will feel, well, I haven't discovered myself yet. I have many weaknesses that I'd like to work on. I have many um, areas which I'm lacking in. And until I've addressed those, I don't even want to think of marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm going to throw something else in there as well, which is that it's not just about companionship. I think something we often come across in Islam when we talk about marriage is that if you haven't, at the point of picking a spouse, if you haven't thought about what kind of person you're picking to be the mother or father of your children, then you, you've, um, you know, it's just too late to be asking that question once you're mm -hmm. married, once the problems appear, and then asking yourself, is she the right person for my children? Or is he the right person for my children? Because that's the question you should have been asking before even looking for a spouse. Yeah. So... So as you can see, there's so many yeah, things. Yeah, there's lo lo loads um, of things, and there's some really, really, really important yeah. points. And um, I think no, it, like all of those things you mentioned, I think there's a lot to think about even oh. before you even consider a, a relationship, right? Um, yeah. And all of these things are really important that you've mentioned. But also, I wanted to just quickly touch on like the, I guess, the Islamic uh, perspective mm -hmm. on love. Um, not that. Again, I think what's important to also uh, understand is obviously when it comes to like emotions, you know, uh, mm. Islam doesn't come and like limit it or, you know, tell you this is the way that you need to do things. Right. Because because yeah. human nature is everybody. Everybody does things in different ways. And some people have get angry easily. Some people get more emotional than others and so on. So, you know, that's not like yeah. you're not allowed to, to to do that. But I guess what I mean by Islamic perspective mm -hmm. on things is. At the same time, there is, you know, um, guidelines in place in, in everything. Mm. There, there's always guidelines yes. in place. So even when it comes to loving someone or something, you know, like mm. you'll find hadiths where the Prophet says, like, you know, your love for something can, can literally make you blind and deaf. Not literally yeah. speaking, but, you know, mm. so when you're so taken back by someone or something, mm -hmm. you could ignore everything and all the advice in the world and you could just be like, <laughs> yeah. no. This this is this is it. This is what I want. And again, human nature, right? We we're attracted to things like beauty, and we're attracted to to these uh, adornments and these types of things. So oh. it can happen. Um, so you know, is there anything just from uh, more of the Islamic perspective? So we've spoken about love generally <coughs> that perhaps we can add in there um, for for us as Muslims to understand today. So I think 
as Muslims, what we need to understand is that love is not such a, um, how can I say, we often talk about it and maybe perhaps culturally or even traditionally, uh, we find that we're told, oh, you mustn't talk about love, you know, you're not married yet. Um, you mm. know, it, it's something that happens after marriage. And I think that's where the problem is because I think the reality is this, that love can happen before marriage. And I'm not talking about um, spending time with each other, falling in love. But if we look at, so I'm going to take you to an example, a classic example of um, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Khadija radiallahu anha. So, I mean, as we know, I think everyone's aware of the relationship, the way it began. It was a business um, set up, a business relationship, and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was managing the business. But what happened throughout this um relationship business relationship if you like is that Khadija radiallahu anha she got to know about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam she got to know him in at such to such a level that she fell in love with his beautiful characteristic and we often find we haven't had the uh, privilege um, to you know meet our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or even mm -hmm. see him in appearance but if you think about it who wouldn't fall in love with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because we hear about his characteristics, we hear about his, um, you know, conduct, we hear um, so much about him and, you know, just in his advice and um, and in his examples, even with his marriages. So if you look at the example of Khadija radiallahu anha and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now we know that Khadija radiallahu anha, she proposed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in her proposal, she expressed her love. So you know, it's that's not something we'll feel comfortable doing nowadays. Mm. But from this, what you need to understand is that she must have felt immense love and respect for him, but she felt comfortable enough to express that to him because she knew that he was open to the uh, suggestion of marriage. Um, and then once she, um, you know, she was sure of that after having sent her messenger, she expressed her love and she didn't hesitate. You know, she she expressed that she loved um, the way he treated his family members. She loved the way he was charitable with his time, with his words, um, and just the way he was. He was a beautiful person. And that's something um, in today's society, I feel, that we tend to hold back. Um, mm -hmm. I find that often, you know, um, in conversations with young men and women, you, you often hear, oh, don't let them know how you're feeling because it will give them the upper hand or... You know, let him be the first one to say it, and and yeah. I personally feel that's wrong because then you're hiding who you are, and you know you cannot then open yourself up after marriage. So it's okay if you are considering each other for marriage. It's okay to say I find you attractive. It's okay to say I really love and respect the way you treat your mother. I love the way you treat your sisters. Uh, you know, I think it's amazing the way you are with your friends, um, how patient you are. It's okay to address those qualities in each other if you see them um, mm. and not feel embarrassed about it. Because those are, when when the Prophet Wasallam he advised us to, you know, see each other and actually look upon each other and to see if we feel that attraction, to see if we feel there's something we like. And I can't stress how serious and important this is. You should never... Mm. I personally believe I wouldn't advise anybody to feel, okay, I'm getting on a bit. Um, and you know what? He fits the bill. He's He's got a good income. He's got a home. He can support me. I think yeah. it will be okay. I think the love will come. I think I'll grow to like him. Perhaps so. But if in your heart you are looking for something more, then don't compromise. And if you're telling yourself I'm compromising and khair will come from this, okay, if you're 100%, you've done your istikhara and you feel absolutely like, something's blocking me and I feel this is right for me, then it's okay, I guess, if you have, the, you know, but certainly do mashwara. But I personally feel mm -hmm. that if you, you know, meet the person, you feel a certain level of attraction and feel, yes, I really want to know more about this person. I really like um, his manners, for example. Mm -hmm. And I know manners we use so generically, don't we? So, but, you know, some girls, it depends. We're in the 21st century, so it really depends. But some women still love the idea of, you know, um, a man being a gentleman, holding the door mm. open, you know, allowing the woman to sit down first. And I'm personally, I'm quite traditional. Um, I love all those qualities as well. Um, 
you know, I wouldn't have it any other way with the men in my family. So, you know, it really yeah. depends, doesn't it? And some women yeah, feel offended does. by that. You know, they want to be equal. But I think, I think I've gone off on the track again. But coming back, I think we have to just keep coming back to Islam and say, okay, you have to have the same reference point to begin with so of course we're muslim we're both practicing um and the way you determine that is if you have a good relationship like you're stable in your family and alhamdulillah you know you're stable in your deen uh, you know what your belief is you know what your reference point is and then what that does is because you both have the same reference point there won't be any confusion if you have disagreements you go back to that reference point and mm -hmm. so coming back to that love what i really was trying to say is that it's okay to feel that you love somebody and the, there is always a risk but there's always going to be a risk even after marriage because love is not just that instant attraction or the infatuation it could even be true love at first sight i'm not sure you know how you define that it's very difficult to define but yeah. of course if you've had that and then you've married and it's gone on for years and years and years then you will probably know then that yes that was love because I felt it instantly before I even met her you know maybe you, mm. you felt it upon seeing even the picture of somebody and it can happen so it's yeah. okay but you need to just be aware that it can be infatuation um, you know and sometimes often you find there's other scenarios where you might feel attracted to a picture and you meet the person and you think well you know what I'm not sure I liked his mannerisms and mm. I felt he was a bit harsh with the waiter and I felt he was very rude, um, for example, you know, in taking yeah. answering your call while meeting with me, and I've waited for this meeting for over a month now. So mm. it's little, little, little things, but um, but if you have the same mannerisms, I guess it will work. Does that make yeah. sense? So yeah, yeah, no, definitely. You come from a certain background. Um, so I'll give you an example. In <clears throat> when I visited Bangladesh, um, this was a long time ago, and this was when I was unfamiliar with the culture. And of course, I didn't realize it was quite common to shout, but I used to get quite upset when people were shouting and speaking. But I realized eventually but that, that that was just their way of talking. You know, they weren't mm. being rude. Do you see yeah. what I mean? Because, because we've been brought up here and we're quite sheltered and we just have a certain manner of speaking. So it takes getting used to. Um, mm. And also another thing is, you know, if you, um, so I'm bringing up, this is probably another point we can um, touch on later on, but um, if you have an interracial marriage, for example, so you've married into another country. So I've had um, visits to Pakistan as well. Um, and my family are from uh, originally from Afghanistan. So again, we had a different culture. So mm. there I often found, you know, there were different mannerisms. So it's, it's really about, so from those experiences, it seems like it's about finding out what, that certain code means in that background and that culture and then you sort of learn to read the language um that you want to speak with the person so i think sometimes we ourselves being human beings we jump to, we jump to conclusions and think he's being disrespectful he's being rude but sometimes you might just need to do some research on the person and find out what is their background you know what yeah. does that mean where they come from uh, so it, it could be misunderstanding so we certainly need to do our homework find out about the person you know mm. before we meet and before we consider but i wonder i wonder if you're perhaps i, I don't know if, have i gone off down another route is that what you're asking no i think no i think yeah yeah i think i think you, you've definitely touched on the right points and uh, mm -hmm. like you mentioned for example the that there is the difference between love and infatuation um, and even from an islamic perspective we could oh. even say yes that is the case like a lot of scholars even when they write books on spirituality they talk about one of the diseases of the heart is what in Arabic is known as like ishq, which is like this yeah. really passionate infatuation mm -hmm. type of love that you're so like dazzled by. Uh, you don't know what's going on now kind of thing, which is yeah. unhealthy because as Muslims, you know, we have, we, we, we're supposed to be moderate, isn't it? We, we're an mm -hmm. ummah of moderation. Yeah. So even when we love, we're supposed to moderately love and, mm -hmm. you know, always remember that we have love for Allah and his messenger and our deen and not to put anything uh, above that even mm -hmm. though as difficult as it may be as much as we are in love with our spouse or whoever it may be like it's yeah, that's why the Prophet said you know none of you are really truly believers until I become more beloved to beloved, you than yeah. everything like your parents your children and even yourselves so that's mm -hmm. really if you think about it, that's actually a really difficult thing to do um to love Allah to love the messenger 
um, that we can't see mm. or have any sense of. So I guess Islam kind of teaches the same thing. Um, but another mm. point that you that you did mention, um, which is that, uh, and it's really interesting, and I wanted to touch on that more, is how you said it is possible actually to have love for someone even before um, potentially you, mm. you, you marry this individual because you're considering marrying them. It's it's possible to love mm. them. Um, so this actually, there's actually a hadith, I believe, where the Prophet said like mm. um, something along the lines of like, Lam nara lil mithlan nikah, that there's actually nothing yes. better for two people that love one another and he uses the mm. word mutahabbain. There's nothing better than the nikah for them to get married, which kind of yes. shows that actually this hadith is kind of uh, implying that, oh, okay, so mm. you can love each other before the nikah, but the best solution mm. to that love is to get married and commit yeah, uh, to each other. Yeah, because you want to express it now. So you're at a point, yeah. you feel this overwhelming love. Of course, mm. you're having to um, confine yourself. So how do you release that? You release it because you um, envelope it in, in the contract of marriage. And, mm -hmm. you know, how beautiful is that? And as you said, the Prophet Wasallam said, you can now, having done that contract, you can release that love. You can... You know, you don't have to have any boundaries. You can show each other how you feel. And that is the point at which it can happen. You can fall in love. And But I think there's one mistake that people often tend to make, I believe, that they think you're going to fall in love and you're going to stay there for the rest of your lives. And that's, yeah. I think, the problem. Thing is, I, I, I believe one thing, that you, you in any relationship, marriage, you can fall in love with that same person again and, and again mm. and again. Um, and if anything, the love we, is supposed to grow, right, Ustad? Yes, don't you agree? Right, yes. Yeah. It's not going to be. You will have those phases of romance and you will have those phases of where you will possibly be lost in each other. You will feel that intense love where nothing else matters. You might even start taking days off work. You might start cancelling seeing your friends. You know, you will just spend that time totally devoted to each other and, and mm. not to say that, you know, you would love every moment of it. And that's perhaps what you can call the honeymoon period. And it's really important. I know people kind of shy away from discussing it or laugh at the idea of this honeymoon period. But I believe it's essential for any relationship because this is the period that you're going to treasure for the rest of your lives. This was your beginning point and you're going to often refer back to it. When you hit a difficult time, you'll often look back at that and think uh, we were you know, we started off on such a um, strong footing. We were so good together. Mm. What happened? You can analyze where things went wrong because you know that you had something good right from the beginning. Um, and mm. that love is good because what happens when you're in love, um, and those people who have been in love will probably tell you and vouch this, is that you, you know, rule out all the negative points of your spouse. We, um, you know, being in our marriage, having experienced our spouses, we probably the only people who know every negative point about our spouse. But when we're in love, we can't remember any one of those points. <laughs> but yeah. let me tell you, the moment we've had a disagreement, we'll write <laughs> up a long list of, <laughs> so true, yeah. you know, of, of things, you know, we'll remind each other of, well, you did this, you said this, you said that. But when you're in love, you don't see any of that. Um, yeah, and that just goes true. with any relationship. When you're feeling happy in a friendship, you know, when your friends, um, for example, spoiled your need and taken you out, paid for your meal and said, you know, I'm going to cook a meal for you at home and spoiled you, you feel immense love. And if at somewhere in the past they've hurt you, they've done anything to you, you think, you know what, he or she, they've been so good to me, I forgive them everything. You know, yeah, it just warms well, your it? Yeah. heart because yeah. So it's all to do with how we treat each other, and it's also to do with how um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, if you want to remove bad feelings, gift make gifts to each other, mm. and I believe in that. And it's not to say because I love receiving gifts, <laughs> but I actually believe in that. I strongly believe in it to the point that I love giving gifts, um, and not because I want to make people love me, but I believe that somewhere, sometimes relationships are quite. Um, it's quite a complex thing, understanding relationships. And often you find you might not be able to communicate to the person or the person may not be comfortable in communicating to you. So what gifts do is it's something, if you give it to each other, give it, you know, just sharing gifts with each other, what it spells is that you care for them or that you thought mm. about them. And that person will think, you know what, here I was thinking he hasn't called, she hasn't called, um, they've not checked up on me, you know, they've not made time for me. But that one 
gift and it's not a matter of how big it is or how small it is will take away all of that because you think somewhere in their busy schedule they've thought about me and they've sent this gift that's all yeah. it really is you know whether it's a yeah. flower whether it's a box of chocolates you know anything um it's the thought that counts isn't it yeah. as they say yeah, yeah. And, exactly. and and having said that it could even be a simple smile and as we know mm. you know even a smile is charity right but we yeah. take it for granted um we don't you know we tend to smile at when I say we, I'm talking about us married couples. We tend to go out and smile at everybody outside. <laughs> the moment we come yeah. home, you know, sometimes we're just miserable. And the thing is, why are we presenting this happy demeanor outside if we're not happy? Because if anything, you should be happy at home first. Um, mm -hmm. And once you're happy at home, you won't have to fake a smile outside. You'll carry a natural smile with you all day. Um, and that yeah. will be whether you're going through difficult times, whether you're going through easy times, you'll be smiling all the time. Yeah. But the truth is, um, I think we all know in the 21st century, it's, 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 you know, mental health is a big thing and it's something we've ignored, um, you know, over time. But I think especially now with um, the social media and like you said, you know, the pressure of looking good, of living a certain lifestyle, of having this perfect life and having a perfect yeah. marriage, we all almost feel ashamed of saying, well, I'm not well, or I don't feel happy, or, you know, like, let's take it now, for example, we're going into lockdown tomorrow, and it's okay to say, well, look, I'm not happy, and I, I feel mm. really unhappy, and I'm concerned about my relationship. We're going to be cooped up in one home, you know, what's that going to do? We've seen the divorce yeah. rates rocket this year, and, um, and as you know, uh, such a you know, with my background, I've worked with many women this year, and the numerous um, divorce cases or the hula cases that are coming forward, you know, women seeking advice, and these are serious problems. They're not small problems, but it's mm. it's it's just I think it's peaked now because of the situation, and yeah. and then you also have domestic violence on top of that. So I think these um, issues kind of cropping up are putting people off and. And, and that's why we're asking the question, you know, what is yeah. love? Because we think, well, if there is true love, then why is this happening? Why are marriages falling apart? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think some of us carry that fear that we don't want to get married because is that the risk we're taking that, you know, years later it's going to all fall apart? Mm, yeah, um, no, definitely. I think a lot of a lot of people are asking that question. And mm -hmm. like you said, it is it is putting a lot of people off. Um, and um, I mean, a lot of what we've also discussed, I think we've already kind of touched on it. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing I really did want to speak about is this whole idea and this whole concept of, you know, love marriages. And, you know, mm -hmm. we have these terminologies today in the community. We have, okay, either, you know, uh, I, I remember when I got married, the the number one question that people were asking me and i personally i found it a bit intrusive and i found it a bit personal mm -hmm. like why are you like why is that the first thing you're asking it's not even like congratulations you know mm -hmm. how's how's everything going how's your wife it's like so was it a love marriage or was it an arranged marriage and i was <laughs> like why why is that why does that even matter why for is that you important? Like, yeah why is that important why do like why do you even need to know you know like mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, fair enough you're a friend or you're even a relative of mine but why is that important for and why why does that matter but it's actually a big thing now people are like this is love marriage this is arranged marriage and i think um there's a whole thing on the the terminology itself and mm -hmm. how we even view it so there seems to be like this either a negative or a positive perception based on our understanding of it this is what i wanted to talk about like mm -hmm. you know the understanding of what even is a love marriage because we've spoken about a lot of things to do with mm -hmm. love and we've established even thus far that you can actually have feelings and you can have even attraction and love for someone even before you're getting married. Yeah. Um, so what is what is the issue here? And why are people so, uh, <laughs> you know, either for or against that, kind of thing? Isn't it strange that we're even asking something so personal? Is it a love marriage? Is it an arranged marriage? Because regardless, mm. regardless of, you know, um, what it is, what you're really saying is that's like me asking you, well, such a bit, do you love your wife? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, you yeah. think, and, you know, you don't have to answer that because you think, well, if I do, and, you know, I'm sure you do, then I'll express it to her. Why will I tell you? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and here's the other problem. When you call yeah. something a love marriage, this is one, yeah. one, one out of many problems that I have with this term love marriage, that when you say this is a love marriage, then it's mm. almost like you're implying that 
an arranged marriage you don't love your spouse in that marriage yes yes it's like you've somehow like just agreed to it and you you'll figure it out along the way which is really wrong at the same time so we're not saying that either one here is wrong like arranged Mm. arranged marriages have worked Mm. and and continue to work till this day and love marriages also are working but i think okay before we continue stuff i think Let's just pinpoint mm. exactly what we mean by love marriage. Because look, I, yeah. I've actually come across some people that are adamant, like they're like, it's haram to have a love marriage. And mm. when I hear that, I'm a bit like surprised. Okay, what do you what do you mean it's haram? Can I, can I interrupt because, you there? Yeah, because I was on, gonna yeah, say, go that, that haram aspect, I think, comes from it, it's very cultural and very traditional. The reason is we try to suppress it in our youngsters because think about the uh, typical mother or father, what they're thinking. They're thinking, my son or daughter is feeling that emotion, love. And what mm. does love do? You either express it inside of marriage or outside. So their instant reaction is he or she, now she's feeling these strong emotions. And if she you know, has some exposure to the opposite sex, um, you know, she will go and commit some haram. Yeah, but why yeah. do you even think along those lines? How did you raise your son and daughter? Did you raise your child? to such a level that that's how they're going to um, deal with those emotions? Or are they mm. going to, um, you know, deal with those emotions through marriage? Do you see what I mean? So if yeah, you give yeah, yeah. child the correct teachings, you have nothing to worry about. I often, you know, I like to tell, um, share this with a lot of people. I say, if you have youngsters, in fact, you know, given the day and age we're in and here, you know, especially in the West, I believe you should give youngsters the freedom to say, that you know it's okay to say that they like someone it's okay to say that i think i might be in love because remember Mm. what they ask them what they mean you know don't make them feel they have to hide it from you if you Mm. have young sons and daughters you know be remember after what did our prophet say that after your child your daughter or son becomes of a certain age you have to befriend them because they've become adults now you cannot tell them what to do anymore they make their own decisions so at this point you want you know, for them to be able to free, feel free to come and say, guess what, mum, guess what, dad, I think I'm in love. And you know what, don't, you don't need to throw the spanners and, you know, shout and scream and get mad, just entertain it, sit with them, you know, listen, hear them out. What do they mean? And say, well, what do you mean? Um, because it could be genuine, it could be a passing infatuation, but allow them that space so that they don't go down the haram path. Mm. And what I mean by that is, and if it is something real, perhaps you can help them recognize, recognize is it real, you know, in developing into a real relationship. And perhaps if it is something that you feel it's wavering or it's not even reciprocated, then of course it's going to be a, a phase that they're passing through. Yeah. Um, but, but we need to make our children feel it's okay to come and speak to us. You know, we're not going to yeah. say, that's it, I'm stopping you from going college, university, you're not leaving the house, <laughs> how dare you fall in love? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's not love which is haram, love is an emotion that, you know, we cannot block our hearts from feeling a natural emotion which, um, you know, Allah Azawajal has created in every one of us. This is our yeah. procreational instinct and it's going to run high, um, you know, once you're Bali, you become an adult. This is how, you know, we move forward as a race. So once yeah. you feel that, and even if you feel that, yes, I think I'm in love, okay, that's fine. You know, find someone you trust, go and speak to someone, whether that's your teacher, your mom, your dad, brother, mm. sister, friend, it's okay. And I think that's the new approach we need to take, that it's okay yeah. to feel that. Yeah, it's more that, about how, you know, no, I was how, say, thank you for raising the, those points, yeah. They've really, I'm, I'm so glad you've, you've mentioned those points. And, you know, you said that it's okay to feel love, but also it then depends on what you do with that feeling. Just like yeah. it's, you know, you, you're not, it's not like you're not allowed to feel anger because it's natural. It's what you do when you get angry, right? So similarly, when you feel love, what do you do next? So a lot of people, they assume that if you have come from a quote unquote love marriage background, then that means their idea, again, because of what we mentioned at the beginning, Hollywood and Bollywood, they think, oh, that must mean that you ran away from home and mm-hmm. you like were dating and you committed this and that and you, d- yeah. you engaged in so much haram and then you got married after that which mm. is like m- in most cases like I've dealt with a lot of people that have got married and mm. that is not how a love marriage works they don't go no. through all of that they genuinely don't um, 
that's the danger of of thinking. Mm. In fact, I'll tell you something, Ustada, which is I was actually surprised to hear this, that a lot of the couples that are getting married today, like I will admit mm. that a lot of the couples that are getting married today that we conduct nikah for, they are coming from this background. This is, this is yeah. a new generation, right? They're in their 20s, mid-20s, and they are coming from this background of love marriages, if you want to mm. call it that. And some of them have even told me, not just some, a lot have told me mm. that their own parents have said to them, you go and find your own spouse like you go and find the partner someone whoever you want to marry and then come yeah. to us because it's, it's so difficult now to get my child married you know you just find someone and come to me and yeah. i was surprised to hear that i was like really that's like where it's got to now which is again is that mm -hmm. a bad thing per se i don't think it's a bad thing again how you no. go about it could make it bad or it could make it good right yes so, i yeah sorry go ahead no no so 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 this mm. is where i thought let's just define mm. The love marriage first that it could just be mm. a natural feeling you've come across someone at work university yeah. mm. outside whatever whatever it may be you've you've come across someone you've developed some sort of feelings mm. for them and you go and you approach the elders in your family or your or, or your parents and you say mm. to them i want to marry this individual or i'm interested mm. in this individual for this reason mm. and then they entertain it and let's just say you do get, alhamdulillah, you do get married in the end. That would be considered technically a love marriage. Love marriage, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which a lot of people are like, astaghfirullah, how could you do that? Mm -hmm. But again, I think it is a lot of cultural, um, you know, uh, cultural yeah. viewpoints that, that come into it, isn't it? Because I think, you know, we could use the um, example of our uh, Prophet وسلم, and Khadija radiallahu anha again. And I know you're going to often find that I keep referring to their marriage specifically. And there is mm. a reason for that. And probably my own selfish reasons is that <laughs> it's a monogam It's his only monogamous relationship. And of course, as we know, uh, you know, it was uh, he was involved in poly polygamy after, hence after yep. Khadija radiallahu anha. But that was as a prophet. Uh, as well so that's something i believe um my personal belief is from having studied sira and um tafsir. i believe that's something that came as part of the prophethood and his first real marriage was with khadija radiallahu anha. so we look at this uh, model of marriage um it's a love marriage if you think about it um okay we don't know too much about um our Prophet Sallallahu feeling about Khadija radiallahu anha, but we know afterwards the kind of effect his marriage had on him after her death, we know of that, you know, there was a year mm -hmm. of mourning after her death. And yes, he lost his uncle at the same time as well, but it took him a long time to move on. But even when he moved on, he was never over Khadija radiallahu anha. Yeah. And, you know, to the point that many of his wives afterwards were jealous of her memories. So, you know, this should tell you something about this relationship. And that's why I'd, I pref I like to refer to it as a model marriage. Because if you think about it, she fell in love with his beautiful character. There was no dating, you know, there was no dining or uh, traveling to exotic places. There was no messaging or FaceTiming or whatever we do nowadays. Um, it was, you know, simply they got to know each other, I guess you could say, in that business environment. So like you were saying, if it's in a work environment, you know of somebody you know, and it can happen because you might see somebody's conduct and think, I, um, like I said, you know, a lot of women or men might feel, I really like this person's mannerism. Uh, perhaps mm. they're from a good family because, you know, they carry themselves so well. They're so respectful towards Muslims and non-Muslims. I like that. Yeah. You see what I mean? So it depends on what you find attractive. And then you might use that as and um, think, okay, you know, I'd like to see what they're like. So perhaps I can um, you know, how do I link up? I think that's the difficult part. How do you then link up? You know, do you link yeah. up to your families? So that's another issue I think we need to, uh, we probably uh, need to address for the youngsters nowadays. Yeah. But certainly would say don't jump into Bollywood or Hollywood because um, that is taking us to a totally different reference point. Um, and all the problems I believe that we experience in our marriages um somewhere because what it is we like to refer to islam when it suits us but yeah. then we want to you know sort of hop back into hollywood and bollywood and don't get me wrong i understand how people like because think about it if we ask ourselves why do we watch hollywood movies or bollywood movies it's because somewhere in our lives we have challenges or we have situations we're running away from so we like watching this perfect picture of a you know somebody else's life and it lifts your spirits and makes you feel happy and feel there's hope. 
But mm. there's hope. But what you need to remember is this is still media. It's not reality. Yeah. And that's where we get lost. It's not reality. Reality is something different. And, you know, if you want to look at your parents' marriage, if it is, uh, well, it depends what kind of marriage your parents have, but you can look at marriage of the people around you and say, this is reality. They may have fallen in love in the beginning. They um, they all had a honeymoon period. They all went through difficult phases. You know, then they may have gone through phases where they had children. There was a point mm. they fell out of love. They were angry with each other because something happened. Then they forgave each other, came back. You know, their relationship got stronger. They may have had yeah. misunderstandings. But at the end of the day, if after those difficulties, um, you know, God forbid some uh, marriages suffer really, really serious um, problems. You know, if you're first born, for example, and I know many people this has happened to, is born dead, that leaves the mother mourning. Um, and, you know, some often the husbands don't know how to deal with this, and this can create a problem in your marriage. So it's yeah. really important mm -hmm. to pick a person who can read you and a person who you can read. Um, and that love you know, because you're not going to always be madly in love with each other. Because remember, it's a perfect, I would say what you're really looking for, love is an aspect of it. But what you're really looking for is a life partnership, a partnership, um, which a long lastship, let's say, you know, just a perfect partnership. That's what you're looking yeah. for. Remember, the marriage is a contract. So at the end of the day, I, I believe we should look at it's like the perfect match. Okay, we're coming into this marriage. Um, and one important aspect is we often go to the table and we usually take in a list, a long list of all the requirements we're looking for. And I often find people don't come in and say, well, here's a list of what I can offer you. Mm. Now you tell me what you can offer me. I think that would be better. That's yeah. more in you know in in line with the marriage contract because it's offer and acceptance so yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's given that you're going to it's given that you're allowed to fall in love it's given that you can express your love um mm. and you know that you're going to think of starting a family but i think it's more what can i offer you and we often find mm. certainly in my experience when i've spoken to um sisters um, you know, it, it, within marriages and also before marriage is that they say, well, this is what I'm looking for, but I can't find it. And mm. it's, it's amazing how I feel none of them have addressed this is what I have to offer. And in fact, yeah. I was actually watching um, some of these programs I watch. I don't know if you ever watch them. I don't. It's almost like blind dating, but where you're trying to match. Um, I think this must be a new thing where you're trying to sort of match make, um, you know, to help okay. people. Forward. And I found one of the sisters, um, I caught this last night, actually, and she she said, um, well, I'm not into fitness and I'm not very fit. So I want to marry somebody who's fit and who can offer me, you know, that discipline. <laughs> and and you know what? I, I respect her for the fact that she was, you know, she's saying this on TV. But not only that, she's honest because mm. she's saying I'm not fit. Um, you know, but this is what I want. I want somebody who's serious about their physique, who can come in and sort me out. But there is an error there, isn't there? Because yeah. you're looking at what you want, what you need from somebody else. Um, mm. and, and, and there is a, a selfish element in that. And it's okay to be selfish sometimes because you have to look after yourself as well. But marriage is not about yourself marriage is a, a contract between two people so marriage is he will look after you and you will look after him so it has to be a two-way thing so you can say okay this is what i require from him um but this is what i have to offer and this mm. is where i'm lacking mm. um, but of course that will take you to another question which is that um and this is something often people don't do but you have to do a reality check as well in that you know, the question we need to ask ourselves, if you ask yourself, am I ready for marriage? It's going to lead you to another serious question. Do you know, who, you know, who are you? That's a question. Mm. Do you know yourself? Do I know who I am? Do I know my likes and dislikes? Do I know what makes me angry? Do I know my insecurities? And what have I done to address them? What kind of terbiya have I had? And if I haven't had terbiya, that's fine. You know, um, mashallah, I think one thing about our youth, um, you can tell now there are many programs available, but you find the youth are coming forward. They want to take courses um, yeah, you know, before definitely. marriage. They want to find out about how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife. 
um, you know, they, they're interested in the Islamic Tarbiyah. I think that's fantastic, um, you know, and that's what's brilliant about the youth today, that they're proactive about this. And often that is the missing um, element. So, you know, mm -hmm. these things, I think, bring to light the importance of the partnership. And I think with um, the Prophet Sallallahu and Khadija, mm -hmm. anha, I think it's, it's often referred to as a true love story. And this is the reason, because look how long their marriage lasted. I mean, okay, you know, um, sadly, uh, Khadija anha, passed away. But look how strong it was in those years they passed. And they didn't live happily ever after. You know, we know the trials and tribulations our Prophet mm -hmm. Sallallahu went through. And also something that is often referred to as well, um, and it's something I often talk about when I talk to sisters, you know, about marriage and the challenges, is how many of us will be comfortable today if our husbands packed their suitcases, um, you know, um, and uh, didn't say much to us, but said, I'm going off for a month. I need to, you know, find myself. I need to find my purpose in life. And... Um, you know, will you support me? I think we'll do. I'm not talking, what am I going to do for a month? How will <laughs> yeah. I survive? What's going to happen to me? How many of us will honestly support him and say, well, look, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't yeah. even know if you're crazy or, you know, you're not or you're fine. But you know what? You seem so distraught and you're my husband. You're my partner. I'm going to do what it takes to make sure you're happy and that you find your a goal in life and that you're happy because only if we're both happy can we form that perfect partnership and so look at the way and i think you know what i'm referring to look at khadija radiallahu anha when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went away um uh, into you know the mountains and we find that first of all she was patient she didn't ask him questions she didn't say what are you doing do you know what you're doing are you crazy in fact, she did the opposite. She supported him. She used yeah. to take him food. She used to go and visit him. But she never interrupted his um, isolation, if you like. Um, and, and that just shows immense support from the wife. Um, and, you know, I ask myself, how would I feel? Because, you know, we can't see Jibreel, alayhi salam, and you can't see Allah. So how do you know your husband's telling you the truth? Yeah, it takes true. a lot of trust, isn't it? How many mm -hmm. of us will trust our wives or husbands if they said something like that? We would think, are you, you know, they're losing it, they've lost it. Um, mm. it, it. We just don't have that kind of trust. And I think that takes years of work. So that love is definitely an important element. I wouldn't belittle it. You know, it doesn't matter yeah. whether you're 18, you're in your 20s, you're in your 30s, in your 40s. If it hasn't happened to you, you're in your 40s, it can still happen. It happens to people in their 50s and their 60s, you know, subhanAllah. So yeah. love is not, we can't put a limit to it. It can happen. This is, um, remember, the Prophet, there's numerous times the Prophet Sallallahu has referred to love. Even at the time, you know, when there was a Sahabi, um, I can't remember the exact hadith when he, saw the Prophet وسلم, kissing his grandsons and he said, you know, I don't yeah. kiss my children. And what did the Prophet وسلم, reply? He said, what can I do if Allah hasn't placed mercy in your heart? Yeah. So what you find is if you feel love, it's it's such a positive thing. It means you have rahmah. It means you have mercy. Mm. And like you said, we're accountable only for our actions, not our thoughts. So we're mm. not simple for our thoughts, but you do control your thoughts because what happens? A reoccurring thought can lead to sin. And that's why mm. we seek marriage. But if you seek marriage, already what you're doing is you're placing a contract between you and the person that you claim to love. And you know what? Mm. That's fine. Once you both sign the contract, let's see. That's where the excitement of marriage is. Let's see where that love takes you because that's what's exciting that you don't know what the future holds. You don't know what you're going to do when you fall in love with that person. You don't know how valuable that person can make you feel. You know, perhaps it would be that your partner can make you feel so loved that you think, subhanAllah, I didn't know the mercy of marriage. Is this what the Prophet ﷺ meant? I didn't know you could feel this way. Mm. And so even that's a blessing. And as Allah uh, as says, it's the... Um, and I think you often quote this in your uh, the nikahs that you've presented. The uh, what's the ayah where you say where mawadda is used? Yeah, uh, wa wa Yeah. So if you think about it, this is the compassion, um, mm. and so it's not. So I'm going to be crude, but it's not just about the sexual aspect. It's not just a sexual relationship, and mm. you know, uh, having a great sex life or having a great 
um, you know, material life, like I said, grand wedding, exotic holidays, living the Hollywood yeah. or Bollywood life. It's we're talking about the real stuff, the real emotions. And you find whether you're rich, whether you're poor, that's what really matters at the end of the day. And anybody who's been in love will tell you, um, you know, it's a feeling out of this world. And when they say that, I often feel that's the miracle of marriage or that's the miracle of falling in love, that it can happen to anyone. And what we do is we respect that relationship and we give it the sanctity of marriage. And that's mm. how we protect each other's rights. And that's how we also bring Baraka into that relationship because we don't copy the West. We don't try to be like, you know, uh, in the Indian movies or we don't try to be like in the Hollywood movies because we know their reference point is different from ours they don't have a contract yeah. in which to protect their rights and love each other because even at some point um when we meet a challenge and you know we make mistakes we're human so we need to remember at some point we, we are going to make a mistake and the thing yeah. is that's when we have to be understanding of each other we have to help each other come back to the path and you know not think oh that's it i've had it with her or him i'm walking off i'm not having this you know not at the first sign of trouble you can't think that's it this marriage is over there is no joke you know because then i would say i would honestly say if you claim you love this person you didn't because you don't know what love is if at the first sign yeah. of trouble you're walking out the door you've never loved this person that's not true love yeah no, yeah that's, that's definitely not true love that was in fact i would say that was infatuation and you mm. know once you satisfied it that's it you were done um and that's why you wanted to leave because true yeah. love is that that which you build on it's years of experience it's going to be ups and downs and you know and in and, and if we're telling ourselves that it's going to be a fairy tale marriage and you're going to live happily ever after then already it's contradicting with islam and mm. already if you think about it, we we you know um we keep looking back at the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's marriage with khadija mm -hmm. anha, but um look at the trials they faced was it really just a bed of roses for them they had real love even at a time you know where he was being granted um prophethood where khadija anha, you know she experienced being um uh, you know the persecution they went through she experienced all yeah. of that they lost children of their own um the hardships they went through this is marriage this is the mm. partnership um that we're talking about and it's within that partnership that you're going to experience that sanctity of marriage and that's yeah. why it's beautiful because even when you're angry with each other even when all you're seeing is the negative side of each other somewhere you know at some point you're going to calm down and that's when you're going to think, oh, how did I forget how good he was to me? How did I forget how much he loved me? You know, yeah. those things will set this again. Because, but what we find is anybody who's um, felt any kind of anger, whether towards your friend, your parents, how do you feel? You think, I'm never going to speak to him again. I'm never going to speak to her again. That's it. You know, I don't want to see their face again. But how many of us really do that? Absolutely. And Mary, no, thanks. Say, you mustn't belittle it. Um, and the other thing I'm going to throw in there really quickly before. Um, you know, I hear what you have to say is that, and often when we get angry, what do we do? We say, that's it, throw the d divorce word in, that's it, I'm done. Yeah. And, and this is why, um, you know, how many times has um, Anna Bissalala said, do not belittle marriage. Okay, you know, you're angry with each other. You can do so many things, don't talk to each other, you know, don't make each other dinner, tea, whatever, don't dine together, don't sleep together. Why do you have to bring the contract into it? Yeah. You know, it's got nothing to do with it. Um, but yeah. we often find, but I, I would honestly say, um, you know, those people who truly love each other, when you experience that true love, and what I mean is when you're when you're used to giving, when you have that partnership the way our Prophet ﷺ did with Khadija, mm -hmm. Anha, then what will happen is even when you're angry, you're going to say, I want him or her to know I'm angry. So you'll do whatever to express your anger. But I can guarantee you this, that brother and sister in their heart are feeling, man, this is so hard because I really love them to bits, but mm. I can't express it right now because right now I'm so angry. I want them to know how much, you know, and, and yeah. that's where we go wrong because you, you're, if you're angry, you don't hate the person. You hate their behavior or what they've done. They made a mistake. They're human. And, you know, Allah and our messenger have told us we're human. We're going to make mistakes. Um, our spouses are going to make mistakes 
And when they make that mistake, we want to judge them and persecute them. But really, you know, that's when our deen comes in. That's when our tarbiya comes in. And we have to think about, well, hang on, have I ever made a mistake? Has he ever mm. forgiven me for my mistake? And how did I feel when he didn't forgive me for my mistake? Yeah. And often you will find you didn't like how that made you feel. So you can learn from that. And you know what? Fair enough. He wasn't strong enough to forgive me, but I'm going to make that step. I'm going to forgive him. And you will often find it that it's little things like that that will endear the other person uh, to mm. their husband or wife. Because if my husband did that, something that I would never forgive him for and he forgave me, I mean, think about it. It's going to confuse you. It's going to throw you off balance. You'll think, hang on a moment. I wouldn't ever forgive her for that. Why is she forgiving me? Yeah. That's so strange. What does she want? You know, what is she doing <laughs> behind my back? But the thing is, a person can be good. You know, um, we don't know the goodness in someone's heart. Sometimes it's not outer appearances. It's not whether you have the khimar, whether you have the jubab, whether you have a beard, whether you have a thobe. People um, in general, you know, people have goodness. Um, this mm. is uh, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, people have faith just because they can't outwardly express it. Uh, I think, you know, we're quick to judge people. And that's what we need to be careful of. Nowadays, I think even with marriage, you know, it's not about um, whether you outwardly uh, observe the hijab, whether you outwardly wear the topi or have a beard. I think sometimes you really can know somebody simply by their manners. I think that's mm. so important. And manners come from tarbiya, and the tarbiya, alhamdulillah, we have no excuse because today we have so many platforms where brothers and sisters, you know, of all ages, whether you're, uh, you know, it's young children, youth, uh, married couples, our elderly, I think we have so much available. Um, yeah, definitely. I've said a lot already. No, so. no, I think there's a lot of, a lot of good points um, that really, to be honest, summarize a lot of what we've been speaking about when it comes to love. Um, and the way that love can be developed throughout the relationship. Uh, and there's so much more um, that I think that we can discuss, but I think we've got the main things in that we spoke about, the the main definition of love and how to maintain that love and even love marriages and all of those things. Um, unfortunately, time does not permit for us to um, uh, continue, but uh, I think we've got, I think we've, we, we've discussed loads of important things and really, I think not just important, but very relevant things to today and relationships today, inshallah, that I, that I hope all of our uh, listeners and all of our um, viewers can inshallah benefit from. So Jazakallah Khair, Ustada Sadiha, really, really Hi, appreciate your time. For having and, me. Uh, no, thank you so much. And there's so much more, like I said, that we could discuss, inshallah, maybe another time we can continue yeah, the, the an discussion. Ongoing discussion, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's so much. But yeah, I mean, so much we can even learn from the seerah. Um, like you mentioned, the example of, you know, Prophet Sallallahu and Khadija, there's so many gems that we can pick from there. So, no, thank you again. Jazakallah uh, Allah bless you thank and reward you. you. And you. Um, for all of our viewers and listeners, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you all enjoyed and benefited um, from this episode where we spoke about love in Islam. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Keep an eye out for more episodes coming your way. And uh, from myself, Shabir, from Ustad Sadiha, we bid you farewell until next time, inshallah. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.